Okay, so we're almost there. Um, at the end of the last clip, I had pasted without pasting as values. I now fixed that, um, which is to say I pasted as values. Um, now we can clean up and finish this up. I'm going to get rid of these top rows. And now, most importantly, I'm going to get rid of all of the individual columns. There are like 650 of them. Notice that my sheet is saving still. That's why I'm pausing. Be patient, be patient, be patient. There we go. So now we're going to go all the way over to the end and we're going to get all the way out to column YO. And now guess what? We have our final table, or almost final table. So we have now just the ID of the point coverage, the G distance, and the E distance. And now I just need to go down and make sure that every point that has a zero G distance also has a zero E distance. And it looks like we're fine. Okay, so now Sorry, it's going to save one more time, and then I'm going to save this particular page as a CSV file so that we can go back to QGIS and we will be done. Here we go. Save as. Now on the Mac, I have to use this Windows comma separated, but on a Windows machine, you can use just uh, comma separated. Save the active sheet, continue, and then close, and don't save. And now we can go back to QGIS. We need to import that table using this comma feature. So specify that table, which is this one. We indicate no geometry, so it imports it just as a table. So it imported that. And now we're going to go to our random points, and we are going to double-click on that and go to Joins, Add a Join. The thing we want to join to this coverage is our EDIS table, and we want its ID to link to the ID of the random points, and that join is done. And so now, if we open the attributes table of that coverage, notice we have GDIST and EDIST. And now we can do real simple visualizations like this. We can take graduated, uh, edist. I'm going to use quantiles. I don't want a big border on my... I want no pen for outline, but maybe I want my points a little larger. And then maybe we can, yeah, we can just leave it as blues. And we get rid of those. And this is actually what we saw in class. Here are the well-known sites as red squares. So you expect those to be white or low edist. But then notice we've got these large areas of very different uh, conditions in and amongst our well-known areas. So that's the basic result. That's basically where we'd want to end. But um, 
we can do uh, some interpolation and if you'll remember we played with here's gonna rnd uh oh well see i should have just ended this where it was that's strange because we have the e dist there uh, but let's go ahead and save this as a shape file, which will make the join permanent. Let's call this edist2.shape. And we're going to want that added to the map. Okay, it doesn't matter that you can't see the visualization. Um, let's try our interpolation yet again, but we'll do edist2 this time. And see there we have an e distance. I add that. And then if you remember, we were using a distance coefficient of 3. And we should, in theory, set a custom number of columns and number of rows to match our G distance, but I basically just want to show you this quickly. Um, and so I'm not even bothering with that. There goes the interpolation. Now the reason I don't really care about this interpolation is that we're not going to use this inverse distance weighting approach for your final uh, publications. This is just kind of a quick and dirty um, interpolation. Uh, but this gives you just the idea. And you can see it's kind of ugly. It's kind of spotty. Um, we'll do better than that and, and um, have a better technique. But the nice thing about this is simply that uh, this way we have a continual, continuous um, interpolation across the whole area. So that is the basics of this, um, this procedure. This takes you to the end of the protocol all the way down here. Um, and that should allow you to, um, to recreate the results that we developed while we were all together in Uganda. So that's the end of this series. Thank you.